Hey, this is Josh from Unit 6, and you're listening to the Rock Sound Podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the all-new Rock Sound Podcast. I'm your host, James Wilson-Taylor, and coming up this week, we have our very special guest from You, Me at Six. It is Josh Franceschi. He, of course, has the new album from the band coming up, cleverly entitled Six. We discuss that, the new sound of it, plus their plans for the 10th anniversary of their seminal album, Take Off Your Colors, and he put together this week's mini mixtape, which you can listen to on Spotify. More on that later on. And as if that wasn't enough, lots more special guests too, from Good Charlotte, Ben and Joel Madden stop by to play a game of Translate the Lyric, throw in some of their song lyrics through Google Translate, and they had to figure out what the songs were, so stick around for that. Plus, Hannah and Will from Creeper take on a game of First Time Last Time, get to know a little bit about their early musical choices and their most recent gig. Stay tuned for that. Don't forget, you can still head over to shop.rocksound.tv to pick up this year's Rock Sound 50 issue, featuring covers and bundles with Dallin Weeks of IDK Howe, Taka from 1OK Rock, Light and Austin Knight from Waterparks, which is available on the newsstand too. That's shop.rocksound.tv. But it's time to kick things off, like I say, with From You, Me at Six, Mr. Josh Franceschi. Hey, it's James Wilson-Taylor here for Rock Sound. Joined now by the main man from You, Me at Six, Josh Franceschi. How are you, sir? Don't let them hear you call me the main man. <laughs> So, we'll keep that to ourselves. They'll absolutely hate that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm well, man. How you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yeah, you're covered in dog eggs. We've just done another interview with your lovely dog, who's, um, who's currently watching us from afar out the yeah. corner. Good looking fella. He is a very good looking fella. Yeah. Very well behaved, actually, I should say, well, for an office environment. It runs in the family. We're well behaved, <laughs> we're good looking. Not really, he is. But um, yeah, no, he's, he's a good dog. I've been lucky with him. Yeah, absolutely. General. Yeah, no, it's good. Anyway, let's talk about music, shall we? Because yeah. this is very exciting. The album's on the way. Uh, two singles out already, or yep. two tracks out already. Yep. Uh, very different in style, both of them. How reflective is that of the whole record, do you think? I feel like this is the first, like, on Sinners, we sort of made a record where there was like 12 islands, and the only, it was like, the only way I could describe it, like they were under like one umbrella. But they didn't really necessarily work together, if that makes okay, sense. Okay, like, yeah. like we had Crash next to Bite My Tongue. Right. Do you know what I mean? That sort of vibe. Yeah, Whereas, yeah. and I think this this is the first record since then as we've really done that again, where it's just sort of like it's a really mixed bag, a very fruity mixed bag. Um, but you know, we've we kind of one of the things we've always enjoyed is sort of like having different. I don't want to say strings to our bow, but like that idea of like being able to sort of express ourselves across the board differently so nice. we've done that on this record for sure that's cool so what, what kind of mix of styles do you think beyond the tracks we've already heard then is it i mean are we really hitting all over the shop here that sounds cool yeah there's there was just i think we kind of we sort of restricted ourselves um intentionally on night people because we were trying to make like a, a record that felt like you know had a theme of continuity and was sort of yeah. like a really cohesive thing and on reflection like just felt a little bit linear in terms of the songwriting on that record. So this record is like, look, if we want to make a song that is like a hip hop song, we should do that hip hop with guitars and we'll just like rein it in and make you meet six of fire or whatever. But we've done that with a lot of different genres on this record. Um, it's definitely a more brighter, positive record um, underlined with my usual knack for being a little bit like sassy. With the lyrics, if you want to sassy is how I would always describe you, Josh. Yeah, you know that's, that. Full uh, yeah. sass, sass coming through. Full sass. But no, it's, I, I'm just. I just want people to hear it as as always. For them. and then they'll be the, you know, they're the judge and they, they they can decide what they like what they don't like. But I feel like there's something on there, and I definitely feel like it's um, the record that we've been trying to make for a while. So whether or not it becomes like you know how every band seems to have like that defining record where so they yeah, look yeah. back on it and go that was the one. I think Bring Me had it recently with That's the Spirit and I sure. think Paramore in the past had it with like Riot and sort of stuff like that and you know I'm not saying that I'm comparing this record to those to those two and the success those two records had but I feel like this is our flag in the ground moment Wow! so hopefully 
we feel that way internally we'll see what other people think but, yeah no yeah, that's very good very name. exciting very exciting uh you alluded a little bit there the last record i mean you've already said you weren't entirely satisfied with it in the end and, and the linear thing as you said what were the positive learnings from it what did you take away and think you know what we discovered something there and we want to push it into the new record or was it was it different no there, there were lots of positives to be honest i just think we weren't i in particular was not ready to make a record right um and I didn't really want to make one, but just sort of had to do it because there was a contract and stuff and that sometimes happens. It happens, it happens. Um, but I, I knew when we were putting out, I was like, I knew that I hadn't really delivered at the level that I like expect myself to deliver at as a songwriter, as a lyricist and everything. And I think, I think maybe some of the other guys would feel at times similar, but in general, like Night People was, it was the record we needed to make to be able to make this one. And we learned right. a lot from Jakir, working with him. Um, and I think just like with anything, when you work with a group of people, you learn good and bad things about yourself and that sort of experience. So we knew that um, that if we were gonna keep it fresh, we had to try even just recording something. Like with Nightly, we recorded the record essentially live, which in its whole thing was a positive thing and a, and a challenge. Um, and then on this record, we are like, right, we need to record it again slightly differently. Yeah. So like Dan did a lot of sort of like, um, almost like breakbeat-esque recorder. I don't think he played one of the songs the whole way through. Like we, we were like building samples and like building tracks around that. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we're getting a visitor here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> He's so well behaved he, though, it's he amazing. Loves it. He loves it. But yeah, no, I think um, in general, I think just learned that also, uh, or what I learned as in that process was that you can't fake something you have to like really like fans of music can smell authenticity and they can also sure. smell bullshit and i think there were times i don't i don't really know what i really said on night people you know what i mean like i felt like i like wrote things to a soundtrack right yeah yeah no, that like, does make sense that there was only sense. one and, I, and the songs where like i was like relaying myself bare like take on the world or give or maybe spell it out you know, those are songs which people reacted to in a way that maybe they didn't react to songs like, I don't know, Brand New or Heavy Soul and these sort of things because they didn't really feel like what was the message of those songs. Right, you know? right, so, right. Um, but what's exciting is you definitely feel like you've taken that experience, you've turned it into a massive positive because yeah. it feels rejuvenated, really. Yeah. I mean, that sounds cliche, but you know what I mean? It feels like you're really gunning for it this time, which is yeah, cool. Totally. So what are the aims then for 2018 and 2019 moving forward? Where do you think you guys want to sit now? I think, look, first and foremost, we just made our sixth record, which was sort of never on the cards. Oh, <laughs> sure, it's uh, an achievement. You know, and I think, so we're just, we've always said that ever since we did like Wembley and the O2 and, and things like that, like ma massive milestones for this band, we are sort of in overtime. Like we're in extra time now. We're sort of playing for fun. Right. Um, obviously, like fun in terms of like the pressures off. Like we've sort of done, in essence, what we wanted to do. But now our our goals are just like just continuously like become uh, really really understand how to write songs and really hone that craft. Uh, I want to challenge myself across the board with that. I think we all do, and just become a better live band as much as we can to. When people come and see us, they really feel like they get value for money and give them what they deserve, which is the best version of our of us and our band, which perhaps at times in the last touring cycle we didn't really have because I think there's just such a it's just such a negative negative time. So um yeah, just just to be happy and to enjoy it, I think. Yeah. It's got um, happy vibes. Certainly, the first two tracks do, man. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a banger right there. Three AM, that's a summer banger. Yeah, surely. I mean, even like fast forward, like yeah, sounds a bit moody and gloomy, but in, in the essence it's of big it, though, it's it, big. It, it, thank you, man. It's like the essence of it is saying like when you feel like you're finished, just pick yourself up again, sort of thing. And that's that's why originally we were just gonna go with three AM first. It's like no, nah, and fast forward needs to come out at the same time. So like the rock fans that are like really back you me at six and that way get a taste of some of the stuff that's on the record but also like they get the, like it's sort of like like maybe i use this too much but it feels like a bit of a rebirth sonically for us yeah definitely feel like it's some of the best stuff we've done in a long time so just been really enjoying reading everyone's comments and yeah and feeling like yeah we're uh, we've found a place 
in people's hearts once more. Exactly. Nice. You never left. Oh, man. Right. Come on. Speaking of which, speaking of long time fans, 10 years now. Of, yeah. Uh, take up your colors. Yeah, yeah. So, where, first of all, how do you look back on that record now? A decade yeah. on, where does that sit? Very funnily, because it's like ev everything has its place, and without that, they wouldn't have been Hold Me Down or Sinners or you know, you can have a Youth Nightmare or whatever. So, it was sort of the starting place, really. Um, and again, lots of fun memories of that record, making that record torrent a record and it's probably the reason why we're going to revisit it this year nice if you know what i mean that's exciting yeah. hint hint very very exciting people, looking people, people are like shitting themselves we haven't announced it yet but like it's definitely happening i wouldn't have like teased everybody for the last three or four months i was gonna we say you're it. putting things up yeah there. if we don't do it we're gonna like really <laughs> piss off quite a lot of people so no we're gonna, we've got it it's all it's, it's all coming. in the diary, it's coming, yeah, it's working out itself out. Man, that's exciting. Another thing I want to look at uh, a few years back now, because we've been asking loads of bands recently, as it's the final ever Warp Tour this summer. Oh, shit, yeah, yeah man. It? About first memories. So you guys, but it was a few years back now, wasn't it? Yeah, um, the last one we did was in 2012. Yeah, yeah, so I want first memory, first of all, first memory of Warp Tour. Uh, yeah, who was on that first year? So it's the one we did in 2009. Yeah. Um, that was I remember turning up in Chicago it was our first show and everyone being like oh you know Warped is a really hard tour you've really got a graft you had a we turn up and we like had this humongous crowd I was like wait boys this is gonna be a walk in the park done job done and then next day we played Boise Idaho and I think there was like four people and a few stray dogs so like I was like oh right okay that's the reality of this tour <laughs> wow. um but I just remember like because that was kind of like our first touring experience in America so well it was our first tour in America and I remember like all of the US bands that I've been following sort of online and like getting to watch them like whether it be like a day to member or the main or Mayday Parade or All Time Low all these bands that we'd never met and that was a thing that was you know I think if we hadn't done that tour obviously I'm sure we could cross paths with all those bands at different times but meeting those guys and like getting to watch and see what they're doing and and uh, how they do things in America, like that was a good learning curve for us to be yeah. part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Who, are the, who are the buddies you kind of made out on tour as well? Because obviously we know you're like good friends and relationships with like all time loan people. Was that yeah. the beginning of it? The... You know what? No, I don't oh, really. I actually, well, actually no, I, I got quite friendly with their merch guy Vinny at the time. Um, but that's just because he used to play a game called CeeLo, which is like a dice game. Oh, okay. So us and like, were we the Kings is tour mad. Uh, merch guy Chris V would do it and that's sort of like how we originally got friendly with people but the thing is like we have Max Heller in our band so you just sort of like let him off the leash and he comes back a few hours later he's like I've met I was out with this person that person and they want to go grab a beer and all sort of stuff and like you don't have to do any of the socialising like he goes and does it introduces these people in your, in your set so every like honestly I've been in places in the world before where it doesn't make any sense that somebody's come up to me and been like oh is Max is Max about and I've been like like we're in South Korea, it's three o'clock in the morning, in the middle of Seoul, and who who are you, and how do you know Max? So uh, that's just the effect he has on people. But, um, Social butterfly, that's nice. Is, yeah, no, I have I have fun memories of it, man, because again, it was, I remember growing up and um, oh, Drive Through Records had this DVD, which they basically, there's a big sector of it, which was all about Warp Tour and all their bands playing Warp Tour, and that was like the first time I saw saw things um, happening in America for other bands that I, that I was sort of in love with and like growing to love. And um, I remember getting the email from our manager at the time, Craig, being like, you've been off with Warped Tour. I'm just thinking, fuck, with Pete, like, we've yeah, made yeah, it. Yeah. It's a big milestone it, for it was a, Yeah, especially like if you grew up in like the pop punk scene as well. Um, now, obviously, I feel like, like it, we don't feel as separated from the American scene or the Australian scene, but at that time, like for an English band to go over and do Warp Tour, I think Bring Me done it, like they did it the year before and like they came back and were like, yo, it's mad, man, yeah, you've yeah, got to yeah. go and check it out. And yeah, now it's like loads of UK bands go and do Warp Tour by the time. It's like, you'd be lucky if there's like one English band, one Australian band, one Canadian band, you know, that'd be, that would fill the quota sort of thing. So yeah, just remember the barbecues, the parties, just meeting people and yeah as 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 you said before we, we sort of built a lot of friendships there that you know um especially 2012 wasn't like a ridiculous year because yeah. i think i think it was that was the year it was bring me parkway the ghost inside all-time low made a parade like all these bands that like we've been growing friendships over the years which sort of like 
that was piss of hell. Like it was just one of those summers where it was just like, this is disgraceful. Yeah, that's a big like. Like we we got it. We got into a lot of silliness <laughs> that summer. It was amazing. And then we actually left early because we came back into this uh, the show in um, Hyde Park for the Olympics. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like everyone was like, because by like no disrespect to Walk Tour, but you get like it's like what a nine week tour and it's, it is grueling and like you get to like the seventh or eighth week and when bands start like being like oh we're finishing our stint on the tour now you can sense other bands been like I'd kill for like a few days at <laughs> yeah, home yeah. Whatever. so when we were like oh yeah we're going to go back to London and like play this, this show um, we didn't know how big the high part there was going to be because you never know what's going to happen that sort of stuff it's not corporate but they're sort of event gigs and I was just like sending pictures to, like all the boys in like park where the ghost to side and like how was your show today and walked and like, oh, you know, saying what's well, so how's Hyde Park? I sent this picture, it's like a hundred thousand people. And they're just like, you fucking hate you guys so much. A, you're at home and B, you're doing that. So yeah. That's yeah way awesome. to rub it in from the other it, side of the Atlantic, yeah, man. That's, yeah, that's how we like to do it. There we are, Josh Franceschi. Remember, he'll be back at the end of the show to put together this week's mini mixtape and the new album from You, Me at Six, entitled Six, is out on October the 5th this year. Plus, if you want to hear the singles 3am and fast forward, as well as loads of other great new music, head over to Spotify right now, search for Rock Sound and click subscribe on the Rock Sound chart. It will be updating every single Friday with all the biggest songs from the scene. Right, still to come, Hannah and Will from Creeper will be playing first time last time, but before that, it's time to catch up with our friends the Madden Brothers Benji and Joel they are playing this week's game of Translate the Lyric if you've not heard it so far here is how it works I take a load of a band's lyrics I put them through Google Translate into various different languages and we have to see if they can figure out which of their songs it is when they are read back in German in French in Italian and in Spanish so let's see how they got on shall we play along at home if you can from Good Charlotte this is Benji and Joel Madden Hey, and we're back on the Rock Sound Podcast. I am joined now by Benji and Joel from Good Charlotte. How are you, boys? Doing good, doing good. Doing great. Good to see you. All right, so we want to play a little game. We've been playing lots of bands recently. It's called Translate the Lyric. Very straightforward. Here's right. how it works. I've put through some of your famous lyrics into Google Translate. All you got to do is look at them and tell me which of your songs it is from. Should okay. be quite straightforward, I hope. That's right. the idea. All right, so the we'll first one. We'll do our one, best. I know. Well, I, I believe that. The first one is in French. How's your French? Uh, yeah. Come see, Good answer. There's your card. There's your card. Have a little read of that and see if you can identify it. It is Les fils n'aimant pas le garçon, les fils aimant les voitures et l'argent. Apologies to any French viewers for that accent. Oh, you're, you're and French I'm trying. Is good. I've had to do, mate, I've had to do this game a lot. I'm getting used to the accents. The, any ideas? Any ideas? Oh, man. Um, uh, I think voiture might help. Uh, also, les filles. What might les filles be? That's yeah. that's your hints. That's your hints. If you okay. can crack those words, I think we're there. Very, oh, very man. famous. This is yours. tough, bro. It is tough. All right, if I tell you that uh, voiture means cars, does that help you out? Oh, girls and boys. There we go. Girls don't like boys. Girls oh, like cars, cars and, and money. money. There we go. I will give you that one. I'll okay. allow it. Slight bit of help. I mean, we don't really deserve that one. Man, you know what? I'm we still going to allow it. it. I'm going to allow it. It's fine. All right. All right. This next All one's right. Italian. How's your Italian? Not bad. Not bad? Okay. Yeah, Let's piquito. have a little look at that. That's a very simple one there. Voglio solo vivere. I will say again, I think the last word is your most helpful one. Vivere, if you can figure that one out, I think we're onto a winner. I just want I just want to live. Very good. We'll definitely give you that one. That counts fully. That counts yeah. absolutely fully. Alright, next one's German. How's your German boys? Magnifique. <laughs> yeah, that nailed it. Nailed it. Alright. Yeah. Take on that one and let's I, see how you get one. I ich will nimali do sign. Ich will not redesign, I guess. They oh. basically the two lines start roughly the same way. That's that's your clue for that one. And they also end the same way. They end with the same word. Oh, no. So I, I know one means sign means you. That's your clue, and that's the same word at the end of each line. <laughs> <laughs> God, the intensity in your face is fantastic. This is oh, this is this genuine. Is tough, bro. This is genuine, man. I love this. This is tough. Man, I people I get people get deep more. in this. People you... get deep in this. Uh, uh, very very famous chorus of yours um okay um uh is it oh. 
Shall I put you out of your misery? Like you. Don't want to be just, just like, like you. We got there in the, the end. Thank God for that. That was beautiful. We got there. Well done. That is the answer. Sorry, right, guys. I'm gonna we give should... you... Never mind. You guys, are, you guys are... Considering it's been a knackering weekend, you're doing very, very well. All right. This is the final one. This is all right. How's your Spanish? How's your Spanish uh, you know, Paquito. Oh, okay. That'll do. Okay. See what you got. See what you got there. Uh, what clue will I give you? Well, Siento. maybe maybe the last the last word might be of of interest. Destrozando. It kind of sounds like it's. I am. Destrozando. Oh, I mean, see. destroyed, so but it could mean something else. It could be taken in a different way. It might be something very very oh. recent. It's sort of in there, isn't it? Maybe it's something incredibly recent. Um, Let's go with that. Actual pain? It could well be actual pain. All this pain I feel that te tearing me apart apparently means destrozando. destrozando. So next apart. time you're playing Spain, throw the word destrozando around, and you never know. It might, it I might like stick. That. I like that. It rolls off the tongue quite nicely, doesn't it? Maybe we should it? record a Spanish version. Man, I would love Spanish to hear version. it, i got to say. I that idea, actually. Nice. I think that could be cool. Did you guys do Spanish in high school? Do you guys do any of that? Um, you know what? Everyone you know what? in LA speaks full Spanish. Sure. I yeah, it's that. definitely like a second language, like in pretty much all over the states. Like, so yeah. I think like you pick up, you definitely pick up a lot of Spanish. Yeah, pick up as much. Yeah. Nice. I've always wanted to be fluent in Spanish, though. I need to really work on that. Man, it'd be it'd be good a language to learn. Absolutely, no, very good. I but agree. I'll tell you what, that, I'm I'm going to give you at least three out of four there, and that we'll is better it. than most, to be honest. Right. That's better we'll than it. most of the ones we've had so far. Uh, lovely to see you, boys. Thank you very much, Benji and John. Thank you. Benji and Joel from Good Charlotte, and their new album, Generation RX, is out on September 14th. Plus, they'll be back in the UK early next year for a huge show at London's Alexandra Palace. By the way, if you want to hear all about their new music plans and the new album, Generation RX, head over to our YouTube channel right now. It is youtube.com forward slash rock sound magazine to watch our full interview with Benji and Joel. Still to come, like I say, Josh Franceschi will be back to put together this week's mini mixtape for us. But before that, it's time to catch up with our friends from Creeper. Yes, it's Hannah and Will, they are playing this week's game of first time, last time. Very, very simple. I throw out some situations, they tell me the first time they did that thing, and the last or most recent time they did that thing. So let's find out their first ever gigs, their most recent gigs, first albums, most recent albums. You get the idea. It's a lot of fun. Get ready to know them a little bit better here. From Creeper, it's Hannah and Will. Well, something we've been doing with loads of bands is a game we call First Time, Last Time. So it's very, very simple. I'm going to give you a subject. You tell me the first time you did that thing or the last time, most recent time you did that okay. thing. Very, very straightforward. We'll start off with an easy one. First album you ever bought and last album you ever bought or streamed because it's 2018. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first album I ever bought was S Club 7. Yes. I can't remember the name of it, though. Oh, that's bad. Self-titled? There was a yeah, self-titled yeah, one. Yeah, maybe it was that yeah. one. Yeah, the one where they were like jumping on the front, front That cover. doesn't narrow it down, ironically. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think remember. there was a lot of jumping. Uh, last one... I actually don't know. I think the last one that I streamed like most recently was Technology by Don Broco. Oh, that's a cracking record. Yeah, I listen though. to it pretty much every day. That's amazing. How about you, Will? Uh, my first record, I think, was Mechanical Animals, the Marilyn Manson record. Wow. Still love that record to this day. The last thing I, uh, I got was, um, I really like that new Arctic Monkeys record, which is very off-brand, I suppose, but uh, I never really cared for them before that one, and uh, I really like it. I feel like everyone else hates the Doesn't new record. Seem to like it. <laughs> yeah. Palais Royale said exactly the same thing. Oh, the really? Other day, they were like, that's my favourite record in the minute, because it's so different and so kind of cool. It's really interesting, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. some new ideas, and being innovative and changing so much, uh, of course, uh, the span of that sort of career, like, I think it's really, really, really cool. That's something I'd like to keep doing with our band as well, you know. Yeah, Changing, definitely. keep evolving. Yeah, hey, that's the way to be. That's how you last. That's the way to do it. All right, let's do gigs. First gig you ever went to and last gig you ever went to, not one of your own. Oh. Uh, the first gig I ever went to, I can't remember if it was Aiden at the Zodiac in Oxford, which is now the O2 Academy, or if it was Give It A Name 2005, oh, wow. so I'd have been like 15. The last one I went to was... Lower the Lancers. Lower the Lancers and Boston ah, Manor in nice. Reading. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that was the last one I was in. Yeah, that's a great show. So, um, the first gig I ever went to was Ozfest back in 2001. Wow. Who was Black on Sabbath. that year? Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, Tony Iommi was amazing. I loved Black Sabbath when I was a kid. And the last one I went to, it's kind of hard because I'm a bit of a recluse these days when I'm back from, um, from doing this. I suppose because you go, go around the festivals, you get to see everyone anyway, yeah, yeah. I guess. You get home, the last thing you want to do is music. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. But like, I'm at the joiners in Southampton all the time. Oh, um, cool. 
trying to think of the last thing I went to see there. That's a really tricky one, you know. Um, mm. God, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you, you know. I, you I know, you know it's, it's so fine. Much. We'll count all time low, even <laughs> though you played that show. So we'll count that one. That's absolutely fine. All right, uh, this is a good one. This is the first song you ever learned to play on an instrument and the most recent song by somebody else you learned how to play. Do you guys ever try and learn other people's songs for a little, yeah, yeah. little cover and stuff? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, because I started playing the piano when I was seven. Oh, wow. Uh, so it would have been something on the piano. And then... Uh, I don't know. And then I started picking up the guitar... I don't know, you know, and like the la last one, the last thing I did on the piano was uh, a Stan Atlantic song called Push. Oh, wow. Uh, I did a little cover of that. Uh, that was probably the last one I learned because I just, I can't find the time at the moment. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. You are busy so, people. I do yeah. appreciate that. That's very, very fair. I remember learning the chords for um, Time After Time, the Cindy Lauper oh, song when I was a kid. Oh, song? Um, on that crappy keyboard that I still have now. Oh, oh yeah. And, um, Amazing. Recently, I learned the chords to uh, sing Drive In Saturday, the David Bowie song, because the chorus has got a really cool climb to it. So. Man, yeah, those are great, great choices. Can we please get time after time at Reading? I'm begging you. I mean, that'd be oh, amazing. Really? Yeah, actually, that would that'd be great. My mum's like, you should sing some Sandy Lauber. Oh, <laughs> that would well. sound sick. All right, let's do a very silly one to finish. Uh, first time you ever did something illegal, and most recent time you did something illegal, and don't incriminate yourselves, obviously. Oh. We can have small, small levels of uh, petty thievery and all that kind of stuff. I, uh, I did get in trouble once when I just started driving. I used to hang around with a bunch of like really shady people <laughs> and they went to like an old abandoned house and like was like tagging and stuff and they saw my car like they got a photo of my car outside oh, and they no. came and like sat me down and talked to me and I was like oh, okay whether well, <laughs> I was like 17 but oh, bless. And last time I I don't know like yeah. maybe like dropped some litter on the floor yeah. by accident yeah we've had, we've had loads like that we've had like nicking hotel toiletries that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. yeah I thought you could take them well who knows? Depends know. on the hotel, I suppose. Oh, there we go. Keep the litter, that's no, no, not litter. Oh, it's put, oh no, I don't drop litter. I don't. Maybe like put my gum on the floor because I can okay. find a bin, which is really gross. We'll forgive you for that one. Okay. We will forgive you. All right, well, um, go for it. Mine, uh, mine would be the same thing, just like a decade apart, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> teenage years, man. Teenage years is all our upbringing. Um, guys, it's been absolutely great talking to you. Genuinely, can't wait to see you guys at Reading, and very, very excited for new music. Hopefully, soon in the future, that'd be great. Yeah. Good stuff. Great to see you. Well done, Hannah. Thank guys. you. There we are, Hannah and Will from Creeper. They'll be back on the road later this summer with a slew of festival dates. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Make sure you go and check out our full interview with Hannah and Will over on the YouTube channel as well. That is youtube.com forward slash Rock Sound Magazine. Don't forget, you can still head over to shop.rocksound.tv to pick up this year's Rock Sound 50 issue, celebrating all the most fearless people in our world with covers and bundles from Lights, Tucker from 1OK Rock, Austin Knight of Waterparks, and Dallin Weeks of IDK How. That's shop.rocksound.tv to check out all of those. Right, almost time to wrap things up for this week, but before we do, it's time for the mini mixtape. So, Josh Franceschi from You Me at Six, he's putting together a playlist exclusively for us you can listen to for the next week over on Spotify. All you have to do is head over to Spotify, search for Rock Sound, and hit subscribe on the mini mixtape playlist that'll be updating every single week as a new guest makes their musical choices. So, what songs has he gone for? Let's find out. Here now with his mini mixtape from You Me at Six, it's Josh Franceschi. Uh, we want to wrap things up with the thing we do with everyone on the podcast a minute called the mini mixtape. Yeah. So here's how it works. I throw out a couple of questions about a mood and you just pick a song to match that mood and then we put it up on a little playlist on Spotify. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, perfect. So I hope Very my brain simple. works that quickly for you though. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Give it a go. Uh, nice. Well, relatively simple one to start with. Uh, what song do you reckon you'd nail at karaoke if you had to? Oof. Well, karaoke is just like a level up from what I do anyway, right? <laughs> so, Selling yourself a bit short yeah. there, but all right. Um, so I'll go for... You know, it's probably going to have to be like... Uh, I'm going to go for... A lot of choices. Lot of yeah, choices. I don't know if the rock sound the fan base is going to like this one, but I'm going to go for Passion Fruit by Drake. Ooh, that's an yeah. interesting choice. Just so I, can, like, so I can be like a little bit like, you know, a bit, like, a bit chilled out, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And then people will be like, why is he doing like a slow Drake song as karaoke? I'm like, it's just what happens when you give me the mic, bro. It's like whiskey in one hand, yeah, shades exactly. on in the dark. Exactly. Yeah, that works well. Big old like chain. Uh, all right, next up, Summer Barbecue. What are you playing in the background? 3 a.m. 
So, can, can I do that or do I you can to... do that you're the first person to pick one of your own songs but I respect oh, that, it because it's a good choice that just shows how 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 the mighty have fallen All right, I'll, I'll, <laughs> it's I'll promo go. time it's it, right. it is promo time well, it's, it's, it, I just every time I hear that song in the sun I, I'm actually like yes bro that's what you wanted to do yeah that's sunny you but, know what um, we're going to have that we'll go I'm for it let you change plus it. get, those, get those streaming numbers up as yeah, well yeah exactly you know? every little move. helps Smart it is 2018 after all <laughs> uh, a song that would make you cry ooh a song that makes me cry. Um, oh, actually, Machines by Biffy Clyro. That is a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song, man. And I actually, unfortunately, lost somebody earlier on this year. And I would listen to that song as like a therapy almost. I know it sounds weird, but I guess that is the power of music, right? Is yeah. that you can feel like... And I, when I listened to it, I felt like Simon... Obviously, I knew he'd, he'd written it for and what it was about, but I felt like he'd written it for me for in that moment in time. I remember texting him about it being like, you have no idea what this song's doing to me right now. And he's got me in bits, man. And he was just like, um, he, uh, uh, as all musicians will say when someone says that about their music, it's like, that's the purpose of it. Yeah. It's like, it's our, it's our thing. It starts off being our thing and it's universal. It belongs to everybody and for them to inhabit. So that song, yeah, definitely. Because it's, it's so true, isn't it? Like you just, when, when you're like, when you want to be close to somebody, but they're gone forever. Like you're sort of clutching at straws and memories and stuff. So yeah, that song definitely gets me for yeah, sure. It's a huge compliment to Simon yeah. as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's a beautiful, a beautiful song. song, beautiful, beautiful album, song. amazing stuff. All right, uh, here's a, a slightly different vibe, but air guitar. What are you going to play air guitar to? What, uh, what, what's a big guitar solo for you? That I you feel like, like yes? it's, yeah, I feel like it's probably been said a million times, but like Journey, uh, don't stop believing. That's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it's no, called. Yeah, cool. That's, that, oh, 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 that's, that's what, what it's called. called. Yeah, that's, that's that's what the people call it. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, that man. I mean, that just song is just like whenever you're, you know, you've had a bit too much of whatever you're doing, that song comes on. And it's just like, get the guitar out now. <laughs> and by guitar, I mean the invisible one, and of shred course. it like no one's business. That yeah. is the end of the night banger right there. Yeah. Uh, what's your workout song when you go to the gym? When you're playing on the treadmill? <laughs> Damn. So like it's a t it's a it's a toss up between like really aggressive hip hop like NWA. I don't know if you would call it aggressive, but I feel it aggressive when I listen to it. I feel like I'm gonna like I want to either lift like the biggest weight of all time, which as you can tell I don't do very often, or like I just want to like pound it. It's that or like Boneyards by Parkway Drive. Oh hello, so yeah, like, I can see that. Do you know what I mean like every time I see that song, it's like I want to physically hurt somebody. <laughs> But in a in a safe environment. Yeah, you which know, which in many with ways is what gym and is. helmets and sort <laughs> yeah. of stuff. But yeah, I actually went to those boys last night and they were there in town and like I was like, me and Winston were talking about the time that we did Grosswalk together and I actually went on and did boneyards with them at the end nice. and like don't ask me why they let that happen. I think it was more of a joke because they were all like laughing on the floor when we did it, but like. <laughs> So every time I hear that song, I instantly go straight back to Grose Rock, like 2012 or what it was. I'm just like, damn, that was a good, that was a good weekend. So yeah, Boneyards, I think it's just a, it's a song, isn't it? It's a, hey, it's a song. It's a song. It's a, it's a big song. All right, last one. This is the tricky one. Uh, so it's the movie of your life. All right. It's the Josh story. It's in 20 years time. The movie of your life. Shit. We hit the closing credits. What song kicks in? Um... You can have one of your own or another one. I'm trying to think of what. So you know that film, The Hangover. Yeah. When they're first driving to into Vegas, it's like I know it's a bit of an, maybe an unpopular thing to say, but it's a Kanye West song, and I'm trying to remember what it is. Oh, what era was that? Like my de my beautiful fantasy dark. Yeah. Trailer, what, what the record's called? But it's like. Um, Runaway, all of the lights. What else is on that one? Blame game. Uh, share my Kanye knowledge. You're watching Rock Sound, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. If, in case you've just you <laughs> skipped the majority of the video and just got thought, just what the <laughs> fuck's happened here? Um, yeah, you know, I'm, oh, that's really pissed me off. He goes na na na. Wait till I get, get my money. Right. right. It's called Can't right. Tell Me Nothing, ladies yes. and gentlemen. That's, uh, that is, Kanye West. That's the credit song for my thing. As as like I'm just like lying on my my bed, my deathbed. It's like nah, nah, nah. I'm just like. Whoa. <laughs>
That's the great. I see it now. Yeah, I see it, it now. It, it will Cut to black. It, it will work. Trust me. Amazing. We're yeah. throwing that on the playlist. Go listen to it on Spotify right now. Uh, Josh, it's been awesome to chat to you, man. Best of luck with everything. I'm sure we'll see you later in the year for all these various shows. Really Thanks, excited man. to hear the rest of the album. Uh, good to see you, man. Josh Franceschi, everybody. Thank you. There's nothing quite like a Kanye West sing-along, is there? Nothing quite like it. And if you want to hear all those songs, like I say, go and subscribe to the mini mixtape right now over on Spotify. Search for Rock Sound, hit subscribe. It will be changing every single week as a new guest makes their musical choices. That is about it for another edition of the Rock Sound podcast. Thank you again to my guests, Josh Franceschi from You, Me at Six, Hannah and Will from Creeper, and the Madden Brothers, Benji and Joel from Good Charlotte. We will be uploading a new episode every single Friday, so make sure you go and hit subscribe subscribe over on SoundCloud, over on iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts from. I have been James Wilson-Taylor, and we will see you next week.